Imagine that you're walking down the road one day and randomly encounter an obscure raffle house. They're about to close, but wow do they have a great opportunity available to you. Today, they're raffling off a very high value prize. Perhaps it's the Hope Diamond, or maybe the Mona Lisa, or heck, it could be the collected works of William Spaniel. The specific item is not important. Here, however, are the critical facts. Tickets cost $1, and you are allowed to purchase as many as you wish. Because this is an obscure raffle house, only 160 tickets have been sold so far. You value the prize worth $1,000. Because the raffle house is about to close, once you have made your purchase, they will draw the winning ticket. If they draw yours, you win the prize. If they don't draw yours, you get nothing. Here's the puzzle, and it's a basic one. Imagine that you only want to maximize your expected value for this raffle. How many tickets should you buy? And if you're feeling offended that the Hope Diamond, Mona Lisa, or my collected works are only valued at $1,000, here's a more difficult question to satisfy you. For any value V and number of tickets purchased N, how many tickets should you buy? In this case, V is $1,000 and N is 160. But this second, more difficult question is asking you to solve this sort of problem for any value and any number of tickets purchased. Before doing any proper analysis, just take a step back and try to guess what the answer should be. It's fun to see how far your intuition may or may not be from what the correct answer is. It's also fun to see what others have been saying, so feel free to put your answer, that initial guess, into the discussion section below. And now I will give you a moment to do that proper analysis to get at what the right answer is. Ready? Okay, here we go. We want to think a little bit more broadly about this question. It's clear you should buy some number of tickets. After all, if you purchase just one ticket, then you're paying $1 for a 1 in 161 chance of winning $1,000. That's a really good deal. So clearly, you want to buy some number of tickets. But at the same time, you don't want to spend too much money on this. For example, imagine you purchased 1,000 tickets. Then you're paying $1,000 for a 1,000 in 1,161 chance of winning $1,000. That's a negative expected value. What's happening at this point is that the extra dollar is not increasing your probability of victory by enough to justify that expenditure. So clearly you want to spend some amount of money on this, but not too much. The question is, where is the happy medium? To get to the answer, it will help to begin by writing down what your payoff function looks like here. Your expected payoff is 1,000, the value of the prize, times your probability of winning. Here, because this is a raffle, that probability is the number of tickets that you buy X divided by the total number of tickets sold, which is your number of tickets X plus 160. Then you must pay for the price of those tickets, so we subtract out X. In game theory, this sort of raffle is known as a Tullock contest. It's very well studied, and so we can say a lot about what's going on here. Your goal for this game is to simply maximize that payoff. But how do you go about deciding which x maximizes that function? Well, there are a few ways you could try doing this. The most basic way is to guess and check. For example, you could start off by guessing that 500 tickets might maximize this. If you write out 500 into the equation and solve it, you get $257 and about a half. You can then guess other numbers of tickets and see whether those tickets will do better or worse than that. If you put 200 as the number of tickets you've purchased instead, then in fact, you're going to end up doing better. That'll get you about $355.55. 
Of course, you don't know that 200 is what maximizes that function. So you still have to do some more exploration. You might recognize that having gone from 500 to 200 led to an increase in your expected value. And as a result, you might reason that going further down could be further profitable. Well, if you try 100 as the number of tickets that you've purchased, you actually go down. You have an expected winnings now of about $284. That's worse than before. So maybe you should have gone up instead. Well, if you choose 350 tickets, your expected winnings are now $336 and about 27 cents. That's better than the last time, but still not as good as 200. So maybe while an increase was the right idea, 350 went too far. What about 250 instead? Now your expected winnings are about $359.76. That's the best that we've seen so far, but we still don't know for sure that that is what actually maximizes your expected winnings. Another way to work through this is to use a spreadsheet. You could have a computer very quickly calculate the profits for any number of tickets sold, and then just go through the expected profits to figure out which is the largest, and then from there, look at the number of tickets that corresponds to that expected profit. Using a spreadsheet works perfectly fine for this particular problem. But if you change some of the parameters, you're going to run into some difficulties. For example, if we made the prize worth $500 million instead of just 1000 then the number of tickets that might be reasonable for you to purchase is going to grow very, very large. And it's still possible, in principle, for a spreadsheet to figure this out, but it's going to take a lot more work. Even then, it still tells you nothing about the general problem, where you value the prize worth V and the number of tickets already sold are N. You can't have a spreadsheet work that one out for you. Fortunately, there is a cleaner and more efficient way to solve this problem. What you're looking at now is a plot of your expected payoff function. Notice that if you purchase zero tickets, your expected winnings are also zero. If you purchase too many tickets, eventually your net profits become negative. So what we're seeing is that your utility initially goes up before hitting a peak, leveling off, and going back down. Remember that this maximization problem boils down to figuring out what this value is, the number of tickets associated with the highest point in the figure. Notice that there's something unique about the figure at this particular point. If you were to draw a tangent line going across that point, you would see that it is horizontal. It has a slope of zero. And moreover, it is the only point in the figure at which the tangent line has a zero slope. So if you have an expected payoff of 1000 times x divided by the quantity x plus 160 minus x, you take the derivative of that with respect to x and get 160,000 divided by the quantity x plus 160 squared minus 1 then set that equal to zero by simply tacking on equal to zero at the end of it and solve for x, you get x equal to 240. What that means is that at 240 tickets, the slope of the tangent line of the payoff function is equal to zero. It's exactly horizontal, which means you can't get a higher payoff than what is associated with 240 tickets purchased. And so that is the correct answer. You should buy 240 tickets under these circumstances. You will win 60% of the time, and your expected winnings will therefore be $360. The second question is only slightly more difficult, as long as you know multivariate calculus. For a general value V and number of other tickets sold N, your expected payoff is V times x divided by the quantity x plus n minus x. We still want to know where the slope of the tangent line of this function is equal to zero. So we go through the same algorithm as before. 
we take the derivative of that expected payoff, which is V times N divided by the quantity X plus N squared minus one. We find where it's equal to zero by tacking on an equal to zero at the end. And then we solve for X, which yields us the square root of the quantity V times N minus N. There are a couple of caveats to this. First, you'll notice that if N is extremely large, then your expected payoff for any number of tickets being sold is negative, and the value that you solve for for x will correspondingly also be negative. Under that circumstance, you simply purchase zero tickets. Second, because you can only purchase a whole number of tickets, the value that you solve for here may be a decimal. And so if it's between two other values, you would have to look at the two integers that's closest to the value that you solved for and figure out which of those two integers produces the largest payoff for you. We did not have to do that in the original case because I chose a value and a number of other tickets sold, which led us to getting a whole number as our answer. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.